Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm here today to do a kind of battle of the foundations, and it's not even really a battle, it's a comparison. And sometimes it only takes one comment from y'all for me to get a video idea, and someone had posted a comment asking if I would, it was completely unrelated to the video, by the way, I don't even know what video it was on, but they asked if I would compare the two Chanel Water Fresh products. So this is the LeBeige Water Fresh Tint and the LeBeige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. And I was like, you know what? I have both. I think maybe I will do that. These are not new products. This one is newer than this one, but it's not like they're brand new to the market. This is not some groundbreaking hear it here first type of video. That's typically not the kind of videos I do anyways, but I have given these a good run and I thought, you know what? I will put them up against each other. So I have done two different demos on two different days using each of these, and we're gonna get into those now. And then after that, I'm gonna come back with a final thoughts, which one is my favorite? Do I think they're different enough to warrant having both? All of that good stuff. So let's jump into the demos. Okay, I think we need to start out with the lesser of the coverage and then move up to the fuller, at least for what the marketing claims them to be. So we're gonna start out with the LeBeige Water Fresh Tint. This one comes in eight shades, it's $70, and it is the typical 30 mil or one fluid ounce. I'm in the shade medium, and if you can see when you look, it has these tiny little pigment beads in them. If you've ever seen any of my videos about my beloved Jane Iredell Liquid Minerals or Hydra Pure Tinted Skin Serum, that's the same type of technology where it has the beads that hold the pigment and then skincare type of ingredients that surrounds the pigments. And when you pump it out and mix it all together, they blend together to form a tint on the skin. So the claims on this are light to medium coverage. It is a gel formula, which you will see once I pump it out. And it has something called microfluid technology, which is kind of like what I just explained with the pigments surrounded by the skincare ingredients mix them together, you get a tint. Claims to have eight plus hours of hydration for the skin, and it contains something called tamarind seed extract, which is what they're touting as the main moisturizing ingredient within the formula. This is Chanel, it does contain fragrance as well, so keep that in mind. It does come with a little brush, Y'all have no idea where that brush is. All I know is that when I saw the brush, I was like, there's no way that's buffing this sucker into my skin, and I proceeded to put it somewhere where I have yet to see it since. I like to apply this with my fingers first, and then we'll kind of see if we can build it up with a brush. So it does come in a pump. It is a very lightweight plastic packaging, and you can see it's runny. It's a gel slash water, and you can see those little beads in there. I'm gonna start out with two to three pumps. Again, see, it's literally feels and looks like a water. And I'm just going to proceed to put that on like I would any kind of moisturizer. And then I kind of just pat it in with my fingers. It's a bit tacky but I don't feel like it's any more tacky than any other tint and moisturizer or foundation would be upon first application. So you can visibly see the moisture that that instantly gave to the skin. I'm definitely a little more dewy, a little more radiant. Can't really say that it added any coverage. So let's take a couple of more pumps, use a brush. I'm using my It Cosmetics Heavenly Lux complexion brush. Pick it up on that and then just kind of stipple it in to the areas where I always need more coverage, which is gonna be right down here, all the way down, because that's kind of the formation my redness takes. And just kind of buff it down my neck because I can still feel product within the bristles. So just to make sure I get all that product worked into the skin. And then do the same thing on this side. Usually when I build up coverage, I don't really concentrate on my forehead. That's something that needs the least amount of coverage. If I feel like the color is off, like if in building coverage, I also build the pigment that's on my face, then I will go up on my forehead and stipple something in, but really I don't feel like that's the case with this because I personally don't feel like I'm getting that much more coverage or pigment, really any difference at all, building this product up. 
but it is giving me some kind of coverage. And my test is by putting it over the lips. I have very dark and pigmented lips naturally. So if I am getting this kind of coverage on that pigment in my lips from what is left on the brush, then there is definitely some coverage there. However, I just don't think you need that second layer. You're gonna save product because really I used about seven pumps. I wanna say I used three initially, and then I used two pumps on each side to build the coverage up. I just don't think you need that build. So you can definitely save product and it will last you twice as long. It's very pretty. I would not consider it a light to medium. I would consider it more of a sheer to light. And I think just by pumping this on the hand, you can see that you're not gonna get that intense coverage. But if you're wanting extra hydration, if you're wanting something just to even out a little bit of redness, if you're wanting something to go underneath a powder foundation, this is perfect for that. Almost as like a primer with that sheer to light coverage. I will do a close up so you can see how it looks laying on the skin. And keep in mind, even though I don't think you need as many pumps as I used, you'll be able to see that even though I did use so many, it still lays very nicely on the skin. And look at that, very, very, very skin-like. And it added that radiance that my skin did not have, at least not to this amount, before I applied it. Very pretty, but not only is it important to me how it looks when it's first applied, but it's important how it works with other products on top. So I'm gonna finish up the rest of my makeup and I'll come back and we'll see how it looks for the final reveal. Okay, full face of makeup on top. I mean, really no issues whatsoever. I used all powder today, but I have used creams over this and it's fine. I think the main takeaway is that you can really just keep on slathering this on and it's never gonna look too cakey, but you don't need to slather it on because what you get with the first three or four pumps is really what you're gonna get. And that is just a very pretty, evened out, sheer to like coverage, hydrated look. And I feel like that's what you get. So this is it with everything on top. And of course, when I do the other one, I'm gonna use the same exact products so that you'll be able to see them side by side. But so far so good on this one. and. At the end, I will be telling y'all all about wear times, if I thought one was better than the other and so on. But right now, let's jump into the next day and next review. Okay, today we are gonna be doing the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. So this one is obviously quite smaller than the Water Fresh Tint. However, you can't always go by that because a lot of times, one ounce in one product looks like it's a ton more than another product just based on packaging, but this does have less product. This is 0.7 fluid ounces, but it's the same price at $70. This does have 16 shades, even though they both have the claims of light to medium coverage. I do feel like the majority of people feel like this one has more coverage than the Water Fresh Tint. So having more shades makes more sense. When you are a more sheer product, one shade can really cover a multitude of shades within it. Whereas you start getting more coverage and that's not the case. So this does have more shades in it. I am in the shade B30, which is what I typically am in Chanel foundations. And I bought this online. So I just went with that. So I do feel like whatever you are in other Chanel foundations is going to work pretty well getting the same shade in this. So again, they both claim to have light to medium coverage. So we're gonna test that and see what we think. This one also claims to leave a luminous finish. It has a claim of 12 plus hours of hydration, whereas the Water Fresh Tint just had the claim of eight plus hours. So I'll see if I feel like this is more hydrating based on that claim or not. And there is no fragrance listed as the ingredient of fragrance slash perfume, which was listed in the Water Fresh Tint. Now I'm not saying that any of the extracts that are in this may not have a natural scent to them, but they did not add an ingredient of fragrance and perfume like the Water Fresh Tint did. I don't even know if I mentioned in the Water fresh tint demo that this is made up of 75% water. This does not have that claim. This doesn't have as much water, but they are both water-based products, base products, foundations, however you want to say it. And I get asked this a lot. How do I know if something is water-based versus silicone-based? And there is 
kind of one rule of thumb that I go by. And if water is the first ingredient, that does not mean that it is water-based, okay? I'm gonna tell you that right now. Because many foundations you will see have water as the first ingredient and immediately go in with a silicone after that and have like three more silicones within the first seven ingredients. That would make it a silicone-based foundation. A water-based foundation is when the water is the first ingredient and then you either don't have any silicones in it or the silicones don't show up until the eighth or ninth or 10th ingredient. That to me signifies a water-based. I don't see any silicones in either one of these ingredient decks. So these are truly water-based products. This one also comes with a brush. I will give them credit with saying in the details that they say the brush is for harder to reach or more targeted areas and for touch-ups. So I am glad they are not claiming that brush is for full-on application because it's tiny and I just don't use it. So I'm gonna start out just like I did with a water fresh tint, pump three pumps. So these pumps are a little bit smaller in the amount of product you get. And you can see it's not quite as runny as the water fresh tint. If I would have left my hands up this long, it would have been on my table right here. So a little bit thicker in consistency, but the same type of pigment beads encased in more skincare-like ingredients. So I'm going to do just like I did with the water fresh tint. And I can tell just upon, upon like spreadability that this is a bit thicker and the three pumps isn't going as far as the three pumps of the tint or the water fresh, I'll just call it. But I do still think three pumps is enough for the face. So right off the bat, I do think this has more coverage than the water fresh tint, which makes sense. It is not 75% water. It's gonna have a little bit more pigment. And I feel like you can see that. I don't even know that I really need to build it up. I'm going to, for the sake of seeing how it feels and looks built up on each other, because it does claim that it is buildable. It specifically says buildable in the marketing copy. So I do want to take a couple of more, maybe like one and a half more pumps. Use that same brush that I did yesterday. And again, just kind of stipple it where I typically need the most coverage, even though I don't feel like I do today. It does not feel like there's a lot of product left in the brush, whereas yesterday I could still feel it, like I needed to get it out, and that's why I buff so much on my neck. It's not as tacky on the brush today with this formula versus the other. And I did not use as much product building up. Now the original three pumps were the same. But when I built it up, I did not feel like I needed the extra four pumps that I used yesterday with the water fresh tint. You can tell there's definitely more coverage. It still has that little bit of a luminous effect on the skin. Also pretty skin-like, but I can, because it has a little bit more coverage, see it just a little bit more when I am super up close to a mirror. But once I get all the rest of my makeup on, I'm gonna see if I feel like it looks any cakier than it did yesterday. I'll use the same products and I'll be right back to show you how it looks. Everything on top exactly the same as it was yesterday. And really the only thing that I can say right off the bat is that it is obvious it has more coverage. I'm gonna have to see how it wears throughout the day. This is obviously not the first time that I have worn this product, but it's the first time I've worn it so close to the water fresh tint with the sole purpose of reviewing them against each other. So I will be paying more attention to, you know, how it wears, how I feel like it looks compared to the water fresh tint on my skin. So I will definitely let you know that right now in my final thoughts. Okay, so let's talk about my final thoughts on these two products. I feel like I touched on quite a bit of the differences that I had seen in between them within the demos. The main difference is going to be coverage. And for the sake of not being incredibly redundant, saying water fresh 18,000 times, which I feel like I already did in the demos, I'm gonna call one tint and the other touch, okay? So obviously the touch has a touch more coverage. It doesn't say how water-based it is, even though they are both water-based. This one specifically says 75% water. This one doesn't say how much water, but they're both water fresh products. So they're definitely water-based. I just feel like the tint definitely has more water in it, which would make sense because the tint does have less coverage. So the majority of the difference to me is just the coverage that they have. The touch does have more coverage. And because of that, I A, don't have to use as much, which is a plus, but B, I felt like it looked a little heavier on the skin 
at the end of the day than the tint did. I love them both, don't get me wrong. I really like mixing them with my Isden Skin Drops, which I talk about all the time. When I'm mixing those in, I prefer to mix them in with the Touch. I think the tint has a little too much water and it doesn't mix as well, but this combo right here is glorious. And for some reason, when I mix these two, it doesn't look as heavy on the skin as when I just use this. I'm not quite sure why. I will also say that a lot of people will use this as a concealer. I have not tried that yet, although I'm very eager to, and I hope to try it as a concealer before I post this video. So if I'm able to do that, I will write down in the description box my thoughts on that. But I really think, as someone who loves the Chantecaille Future Skin Gel Foundation as a concealer, I think I will actually really like this for concealing my under eyes. And I also think it would work really well if you use this, like if you have both of them, if you use this as your whole entire base and only use this on the places where you need a little bit more extra coverage. All around, you're gonna use less product that way than trying to build up the coverage with just the tint. But it also requires two products, so it kind of balances each other out. Just depends on if you wanna purchase both of them, if you already have both of them, as to how you're gonna wear them. I do think that the tint is best suited for normal to dry skin. I think if you have oily skin, it's just not gonna stay very long and it's probably not gonna be what you're looking for. But if you do have oily skin, I'm not saying don't try the touch because this one is a little bit less dewy, less hydrating, even though it is hydrating, it's not as hydrating. And I just feel like from my experience that if you're someone that does like, you know, a glowy look, but you also have oily skin and you wanna make sure something sticks around that you might wanna go with this one. I don't think there's any age range that's gonna appreciate these more than another. It just depends on your skin type. Obviously, if you have very dry skin, you could be 20 and have super dry skin and really like this. You could be 80 and have super dry skin and really like this, or vice versa and not like it at all because your skin is not suited for it. For me personally, I did not have an issue with the wear on either one of them. I don't feel like anything patched off or broke apart, clung to dry patches, looked bad. I didn't feel like that at all. The main difference, again, is the coverage and the fact that this one looked a little bit more makeup-y. So if I had to choose between the two, I would choose the Water Fresh Tint. Even though it almost looks like I'm not doing anything to my face, I have a couple of products like that in my collection where it's like, why am I even doing this? Am I applying product to my face? But then when you get done with it and it settles in, it just does something kind of magical to the skin. I feel that way with my Chantecaille Cushion Foundation. First time I used that, I was like, what am I, am I even doing anything to my skin? But it is magic what it does to the skin. And I kind of feel the same way about this. No, you're not gonna get a lot of coverage out of it, but it really makes the skin look very pretty. It's what I have on today. While testing this, I was just reminded how much I love it and asking myself why I don't use it more. One of the big questions I get is how my Jane Iredell Hydra Pure Tinted Serum compares to both of these products because it is kind of the same technology, right? It's got the little beads of pigment encased in skincare products and when you pump it out, they mix together. I apply it the same way on my skin. I use my hands. While there are some some similarities because, you know, the formula is produced in the same type of way and presented in the same type of way, I do feel like they're different enough. And if I had to pick the one that it's most like, I would say probably finished product. It's most like the water fit fresh tint however it has a tad bit more coverage and on the skin looks a little bit better than this and i don't want to sound like i'm bashing this because i'm not i do really like it i'm just kind of trying to put them in order of how they appear on the skin the coverage that they have and my preferences so if i had to compare again the hydro pure tinted serum to one of these it would probably be most like the water fresh tint with a tad more coverage, but I feel like the finished product on my face is the most similar to this. The reason I have both of them is because I have a YouTube channel and I love a foundation product. Do I think anybody else needs both of them? Probably not. Um, you know, I'm assuming everybody watching this has more than one foundation in their 
collection. So you could easily go with one of these. And if you felt like you needed to add coverage, you could use the foundation or concealer that you already have existing in your collection. If you love Chanel and you really like the idea of layering them or just like the idea of having them, by all means, go for it. But at the end of the day, if I had to pick, it would be the Waterfresh Tint. So I am hoping that answered some of your questions and that the demos were helpful. I will have everything listed and linked down below per usual. Let me know if you have any questions. If you've tried one of these, both of these, what's your favorite? Did you hate both of them? Did you love both of them? We all want to know. So let us know down in the comment section below. Thank y'all so much for watching. Be sure and like and subscribe before you leave so you don't miss out on any future videos. And I hope you all go out and have a very blessed day.